In this video, I'm going to explain the color workspace. It can be quite overwhelming when you first open it up. Like there are so many tabs, settings, curves. It is a lot, but I promise you after watching this video, you will not only understand the entire color works, you will not only understand the entire color workspace, but you will also know how to use it and how to take advantage of it. I added timestamps in the description and I'll also link some other color related videos so you can check those out after watching this video. And without further ado, let's start and open up Premiere Pro. After we've opened up Premiere Pro, we want to open the color workspace right here. And the first thing that you will see is right here, there are several tabs. There's the basic correction tab, creative, curves, color wheels that match, HSL secondary, and vignette. We're going to go through all of these tabs, but before we do that, we're going to look at the scopes right here. So right here, you'll see Lumetri scopes or Lumetri scopes. I'm still unsure. I should know by now, but I'm still unsure. I'm going to call it Lumetri scopes. And then these two are the scopes that I use, but there are plenty of other scopes, but in my experience, these two suffice. Now, if you want to work with another scope, what you want to do is you want to right click on the window and then check the scopes or the waveforms that you want to see. The one on the left is the vector scope YUV. And if we explore this a little, what you can see is these are all the colors on the spectrum and there is some gray stuff I don't know what to call it. I know Becky calls it blob. So there's a gray blob in the middle that represents the colors of your video. So as you can see in this video, there are a lot of orange tones. You can use this vector scope to color correct your video. Basically what you want to do is you want to make sure that this gray blob is distributed evenly. I do have a video where I go into detail and where I show you exactly how I color correct my video using this scope. So definitely check it out. A link will be in the description and in the cards right here. Now the second one is a waveform and this is the waveform Luma, which shows the exposure of your video. So right here are the blacks, the shadows, the midtones, the highlights and the the whites. Again, you want this to be spread evenly, just like the vector scope. You want to make sure that it's all distributed evenly. What you don't want is any information to be crushed either right here or right here. Again, I explained this all way more thoroughly in my color correction video. But for now, basically what you want to do with the vector scope is you want to change the temperature and tint and make sure that it's distributed evenly. But you always want to refer back to your video because in this case, you can see that there is a lot of yellow and orange in my video but if we take a look at my video the buildings are all orange so if we're going to color correct this and we're going to turn down the temperature and make it a lot colder it is not going to look great because the buildings are orange so always make sure to refer back to your video and make sure that what you see on your vector scope on, on your waveform is accurate and this video is a perfect example to show you what I meant by crushed information. Because as you can see right here at the top, at the line that says 100, you can see that it's all like pushed to the ceiling. It doesn't look good. And that is if you refer to the video, as you can see, that is this part because all the highlights are blown out. So basically before you start filming, you want to make sure that the highlights are not blown out because you cannot recover these. But in my case, this street was so dark that I kind of had to choose what to do. So I decided to blow out the highlights. And then what you want to do with the waveform is the same thing that you want to do with the vector scope. You want to make sure that it's all distributed evenly. So as you can see, there's a lot of information going on at the bottom, which means that the video is pretty dark. So for example, you can increase the exposure a little bit, or you can bring up the shadows to color correct your video. So I do all of my color correction in the basic correction tab, but you can also use any of the other tabs that we'll go into in a second. Now, before we go into the other tabs, let's first explain explore this entire section. So right here below Lumetri Color, we have this FX button. And basically what this does is if you click it, it will disable all of the adjustments that you did. So that is a great way to check the before and after of your video. Now, if you want, for example, if you're using multiple Lumetri effects, what you can do is you can click on this drop down menu and click on rename and rename your Lumetri color effect. So then in the effect controls tab, you can easily find the adjustment that you want to make. But we will come back to all of that at the end of the video. And then lastly, we have a reset effect in case you decide that everything looks complete. <laughs> and you want to get rid of it, then you can just reset it right here. So it just shows you the FX button, but if you want to see the before and after of a specific adjustment, for example, in the basic correction tab, then just uncheck or check this box. 
So we've already kind of explored the basic correction tab, but there is so much more to explore. So let's start at the beginning right here. There is an input LUT where you can import your LUT, but I never really use it. I usually add the LUT in the creative tab, then you can add it here. Now, as you can see, it is divided into two sections. There is a white balance section and a tone section. In order to adjust the white balance, you can use the temperature or the tint slider, or you can use the eyedropper if you have something white in your video, which is how I color correct all of these videos usually i just hold a piece of paper of white paper in front of it and then before i start color correcting i just use the eyedropper i click on the white paper and it will usually give me a pretty accurate white balance now in the tone section i already quickly showed you this you can correct the exposure the highlights the shadows everything basically and especially in the basic correction tab use the vector scopes to color correct your video accurately there's also an auto option, which will give you a really good starting point. You can always try that out. And if it gives you the most horrible starting point, which sometimes happens, then just reset it by clicking on this button right here and correct it manually. If you click on the reset button, you will reset all of the tone sliders. So if you want to reset only one slider, then you want to double click on it. And like I already said, if you want to see the before and after of the adjustment, you can uncheck the box right here and you can click on FX right here to disable all of the adjustments. One down, many more to go. So let's move on to the creative tab. The first thing we see is look, and this is where you import your LUT because you can change the intensity of your LUT. And this is not something that you can do in the basic correction tab. So that is why I said, if you have a color correction LUT or a Rec 709 LUT, you can import it in the basic correction tab. But I like to add everything in this look in this creative section because I can change the intensity even of the Rec 709, even though I don't really change the intensity, I love to have the option. I think these adjustments all speak for themselves. You can add a faded effect by increasing the value of the faded film. You can sharpen your video and you can adjust the vibrance and the saturation. The difference between vibrance and saturation is that saturation intensifies all the colors in your video where vibrance only intensifies the muted colors in your video. So it will affect the saturated colors less than the desaturated colors. And then these are the tint wheels and here you can add a color to your shadow or your highlight. So what you want to do is you want to just click on it and then drag it to a color and then a tint balance balances out the two colors that you have selected now it is time for curves this is probably the part that you've been waiting for this is the most complicated part but it's the most fun part because when you understand how to do this and how to manipulate colors it is going to open up a whole new world and you're going to love it so this curve right here controls the luma or the brightness and there is also a red green and blue curve or the RGB curves. Now the Luma curve is also called the master curve. And basically if you make a change in the master curve, it will affect all of the three colors. So if you want, you can go in and create curves for the colors. For example, if you would like to add more red to the video or to the highlights, you move it this way. There is a whole science behind this. So if you want to learn more about this, I will link a video in the description that you can check out. But I want to keep this video as accessible and as easy as possible. And this is basically all you need to know. And I personally don't really use the RGB curves. I only use the master curve. So this is really all you need to know in order to get started. When we scroll down, we will find different lines that do different things. And it looks very complex, but trust me, it is not as complex as it looks. This first curve is a hue versus saturation curve. If you want a color to pop more or less, this is a great place to do it. As you can see, all the colors or all the hues are displayed on the line right here. And the Y value or the vertical line stands for saturation. So if you create points on the line and you drag the line in between those points up, you will add more saturation. What you can also do is use this eyedropper to select a color. And as you can see, the points are already created for you. If you want to delete a point, then press Ctrl or Command and click on that point. And if you want to reset the entire line, then double click on it. The next graph is the hue versus is hue graph and this is another interesting one if you want to manipulate colors in a nutshell this is how you change one color into another one so if you create two points right here as soon as you drag the line up or down you will see that another line appears so if you want your color to change to blue then what you want to do is you want to drag the line to the blue area See, I told you it wasn't as complex as it looks. It looks very complex, but as soon as you understand it, it's actually 
so straightforward. So the third curve is the Hue versus Luma curve, and this one allows you to change the brightness of a specific color in your video. So if you want a certain color to be a little bit darker or a little bit brighter, what you want to do is you want to create points to select that color and you want to move the line in between those points. So the Luma versus Saturation curve can be used if you want to change the saturation of the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. So this is pretty similar to the Hue versus Luma curve, but the difference is that this affects the saturation and not a specific color. So if you want to change the saturation of the blacks or the shadows, for example, you will create points right here and then you'll drag the line up for more saturation or down for less saturation. The last curve is the Saturation versus Saturation curve. Huh? When I first saw this curve, I was like, saturation versus saturation? What does that even mean? Well, this curve is useful when you want to change the saturation more specifically and not the saturation of the entire video. So, for example, you want the saturation of the video to be more even. It could be that some parts of your videos are already well saturated and other parts aren't. So, if we drag the line up or down, you will see that the saturation of the entire video is increased. The left side represents the less saturated colors and the right side of this line represents the saturated colors. So, if you want to leave the already well saturated parts like they are, you can create a point in the middle for example and then drag the left side up it is so easy it makes so much sense just the name just kind of just it's it's confusing but it's so easy and now that the hardest part is behind us feel free to rewind pause the video take some notes go through it again if you want to and like i said there will be timestamps in the description okay let's move on to color wheels and match the first button we see is the comparison view, and this is super useful if you want to match your shots. So the first thing that you want to do is you want to enable it by clicking on the button, and then on this timeline you can find the clip that you want to match your current clip with. This is so useful for shot matching because you want to make sure that all of your shots look the same, they're exposed equally, everything looks similar, so this is a great option. And there is another nice little trick, because with the comparison view enabled, you can click on apply match to match the colors from your left screen, which is your reference screen, to your current video, which is the right screen. Always make sure if there are any faces in your video that you have the face detection checked. This is a very quick way to match your color grades. And when you're done, all you have to do is disable the comparison view again. Right below this, we will find the color wheels. And with these color wheels, we can add a color to the shadows, the midtones, or the highlights. And with the sliders right next to them, you can raise or lower the shadows, midtones, or the highlights. This is just another way of adjusting the exposure. There are multiple options within the color workspace, and there is no right or wrong. It kind of depends on your own personal preference. So if you prefer these sliders, then just use these. And like I explained earlier, just drag the plus sign to a color to add it to your shadows, midtones, or your highlights, and double click on any of the wheels or sliders to reset it. The next tab is the HSL secondary tab, and this is one of my favorite tools and the tool that I always use in every video because you can isolate a specific color with this tool. For example, you can enhance your skin tone, which is what I do in all of my videos. A little bit guilty of that. But you can also isolate a skin tone so you can add a color to your video without it affecting your skin tone, which is how I usually do the famous teal and orange look, which I will link in the description below. But of course, it is not limited to skin tones. For example, you can also change the color of a shirt, the color of a wall, the color of anything by just using the eyedropper and then clicking on that color and then change the color. But I usually use it for skin tone, so I'm gonna show you how to do that. We're going to use the eyedropper to select our skin color and then we click on this box right here that says color gray. Now everything except for our skin will turn gray. Depending on the lighting in your video, it could be that there's multiple shades in your skin tone. For example, in my face, there could be like a darker part on my face and that is not selected. So what we need to do is we need to click on this eyedropper plus icon right here and add more shades to it. And then you can play around with these three sliders right here to isolate the skin tone. Now there's even an easier way than having to use the eyedropper and that is by clicking on the red color right here. In my case, my skin is in the red spectrum. So if I just click on the red, that usually my entire skin is selected. But I still play around with these three sliders to make it look even better. And if you don't like what you did, then you can click on the reset button 
right here. And again, if you want to reset one of the sliders, then just double click on the slider. The denoise and blur option are useful to soften the isolation, which I like. So I always make sure that I blur and denoise it a little bit. In this case, with this selection, we can enhance our skin tones. But if we want to isolate the skin, we need to click on the invert button right here. Now, as you can see, everything except for our skin is selected. But in this case, we actually want to edit the skin so we don't click on invert. Or if you already clicked on it, just click on it again. Down here, we have one big color wheel, but we also have three separate color wheels if you want to edit the skin tone in more detail. And the slider right here affects the exposure. And then down here, we have the settings that we've already went through earlier, so I'm not gonna go through it again. And then the last tab is the vignette tab. And I like to use the vignette to bring attention to what's happening in the center of the video. It basically fades out the edges of the video by making it lighter or darker. And for demonstration purposes, I'm going to set the feather to zero so we can see a clear line. So the amount is how much you want the edges to be darkened or lightened. And the midpoint is how much of the video you want to be affected. So if we lower the midpoint, it will be smaller, which means that the edge of the video expands inwards. And then we have the roundness, which is pretty straightforward. It's just how round you want the vignette to be. And then we're back to feather, which I just adjusted to show a very sharp edge. So we already saw what it did, but basically it softens the edge or the transition from the midpoint area to the darkened or the lightened area. Now that we've gone through all of the tabs and that you know what everything means, I do wanna give you some extra tips that will really help you step up your color grading game. Firstly, if you change any of the colors or any of the settings in the Lumetri menu on the right, a Lumetri color effect is created in the Effect Controls tab. So you can either adjust everything in the Effect Controls tab or in the Lumetri menu. It is all based on personal preference. This also means that you can add multiple Lumetri color effects and you can make different adjustments in each. You can make another Lumetri color effect by clicking on this drop down menu right here and click on add Lumetri color effect. Or what you can do is you can open up the effects tab and type in Lumetri color. If you want to work or change any of those effects in this big Lumetri menu, what you want to do is you want to go back to the drop down menu and then select the Lumetri color effect that you want to adjust. But when you add multiple Lumetri color effects, I highly recommend you to change the names of all of them so you can easily find them. And again, you do that in the drop down menu by clicking on rename. And by creating multiple Lumetri color effects, it also means that when you want a Lumetri color adjustment to only affect a part of the video, you can create a mask by clicking on the buttons right here. If you have created a color grade that you absolutely love, you can create a preset by going to the effect controls panel right here right click on the Lumetri color and then click on create preset. And if you want to export it as a LUT, then click right here and select export as cube. Now that we know how everything works, it is time to put it to use. So make sure to watch my color correction video next to get started. And of course, if you aren't subscribed already, make sure to hit subscribe and the notification bell so you will be notified when new videos come out. But until then, I'll see you in this video.